Healthy eating does not mean that you don't have your snacks every now and then, that you don't have your ice cream, that you can't even go out for drinks. No, that is not healthy eating. That is restrictive eating. So hopefully, by the end of this video, we will have a clarity on what healthy eating is and we will be more willing to embark on this healthy eating journey. Because of the misconception and restrictions that are associated with healthy eating, a lot of people tend to dive away. They also tend to avoid nutritionists and dietitians because they don't want to be told to eat healthy because they associate it with a lot of restrictions, a lot of complications and a lot of things that make people sad, eh? but that is not the case. I am not sad and I eat healthy. Do I look sad? No. There are steps that you can follow to make sure that you eat healthy without avoiding things that you like and even without overeating things that are seemed or deemed to be healthy like vegetables and fruits. Eh? When I am talking about a healthy diet, I usually talk about adequacy. This means that the food that you're going to take is adequate enough for you. There are several factors that actually influence the amount and types of foods that you should be taking on a day-to-day -day basis eh? and these factors we have one of them being age there are metabolic changes that come about that usually affect how your body metabolizes and uses nutrients after 40s you tend to need less carbohydrates whether whole or processed metabolism slows down and also there's the effects that come about with aging like the hormonal changes and such so you might need more fat also your protein needs might be lower depending on your activity level another thing that will actually affect how much or how little of a nutrient that you need is presence or absence of disease eh? from diabetes to cancers, HIV. With a lot of research and studies on foods and nutrition, a lot has come up on the types of particular diets that someone needs to adhere to when they are struggling or when they are managing a specific condition. So if you are diabetic and I am not, our food intake should be different. Of course, there will be some restrictions because your body has an internal system, a mechanism, we call it homeostasis balance, that actually aims at maintaining and ensuring that things are at levels. When you're not sick, your body is able to safely excrete the excesses that it doesn't need to take up only what it needs. But again, when you overdo it, when you continue with overconsumption for long periods of time, your cells or your body might get tired and this is where diseases come in. Food is very important because it gives us nourishment, it gives us energy and to fuel our activities and such. If you overconsume or underconsume specific nutrients, you will be doing more damage to your body than any good. So that is the first thing that we need to ensure that what we take up is adequate enough for our specific needs. Not our neighbors, not our husbands, not our children, not our friends. This is the main reason that I usually tell my people that nutrition care or diet planning is usually individualized care, not for the whole community at once. The second thing that I usually tell people is balance. <laughs> Make sure that you stick around because I have a video coming around on balance and variety, which is better. In simple terms, a balanced meal basically has all the macros and all the micros. The macros we have is carbohydrates, we have protein, we have fat for energy, we have fiber, and we have water. The food groups that are needed in big amounts. Eh? Then the macros, of course, we have vitamins, minerals, phytos, and the rest. Of course, uh, if you eat something like maybe ugali or something like rice uh, with lentils and avocado or cabbage, that is a very balanced meal but you see people tend to have the same specific type of meal like either you're lazy you don't want to prepare meals or you're tired or you just don't fancy preparing meals yes you're taking up the balanced meals but your body needs varied diets a varied diet that is balanced is the best the way we are designed we are designed to consume variety of meals from the plants animals and such our gut has a billion microbes and for these microbes to be utilized you have to consume the different types of food so that the different enzymes are activated so that the microbes are also released or activated to be functional. So eating ugali, mayai and skuma daily or eating ugali meat, skuma daily is not a good thing. It is important that you vary that diet. Every once in a while eat gideri, eat rice, chapati, noma, eat ngwashe. Just make sure that you mix up your meals. Don't eat the same thing every now and then in the name of its balance. Of course I understand that there are things that will actually make people not eat variety of meals. One of them being socioeconomic status. Maybe you cannot even afford to buy or consume these different types of meals but if you can afford ugali you can definitely afford rice or some meals take less time to prepare like you cannot compare ugali and gideri ugali will take you seconds to prepare gideri might take you an hour to do with the laziness of preparing meals it is important that you understand the benefits of taking up varied meals if you have been consuming the healthy the healthy balanced meals that are not varied you need to start consuming varied meals now 
Is that okay? Yes. Another aspect of healthy eating emphasized by most dietitians is a meal that has some caloric control. Eh? Calories are not demons as the society is trying to put them out. But it is important again to make sure that you're not over consuming these calories, that you're just consuming enough for your energy output. Of course there are things that affect calorie intake. Again we have age. The older you are the lesser you need. The more active you are the more you need. There is the body type how big or how small you are. Your BMI if for someone who is obese and someone who is not obese their caloric needs cannot be the same. The obese person will definitely need more calories. The story that people are propagating on TikTok that your calorie needs need to be 2100 kilocalories a day that is shady. That is shady because you're going to harm this person who's obese or this person who's overweight. They are going to be underperforming. Underperforming in such ways that their BMR, the way their body is functioning, is going to be altered. And when it's altered, it's bad because they are going to be having low levels of energy. They're going to be having like sluggishness. They can even get sick. Eh? Even if you're obese, just make sure that you're taking up enough for you. Don't overconsume, don't underconsume. Just take up enough. That is what we mean by calorie control the next thing is density this is my favorite point of meal planning or healthy eating eh? we have talked about adequacy we have talked about balance we have talked about calorie control now we are on density density is basically encompassing all these eh? when you're talking about dense meals you're talking about meals that have other nutrients than the specific nutrient that it is known for. A good example of a dense meal is an avocado or an egg or even legumes. Eh? Legumes are dense because they are known as the plant sources of protein but they have a good amount of phytose, they have a good amount of uh, fiber, they also have a good amount of carbohydrates. Eh? The egg has protein, it has vitamin A, it has iron, it has fat, it has energy and such. When it comes to calorie control, a lot of compromises is usually done when it comes to other nutrients and micros. Even with the health things that we actually advocate for the fruits and the vegetables if you over consume them you're going to end up under consuming your proteins because the fiber content is too filling in your stomach again it can irritate your bowels eh? and again also if you have most conditions like maybe stomach issues it is important that you also try as much as you can to limit your intake of fibers adequate amount of fiber per day around 300 milligrams a day is very important one of the reasons that we do not advocate against over consumption of fiber is because most of us rarely meet up the 300 milligrams a day because we want to eat bread like eight slices of bread with tea we do rice and nyama we also want to do dinner we do ugali and meat where is our fiber intake very very limited but again Let's purpose to consume enough amounts of fibers, not over consume it. Another thing, if you embark on healthy eating, one of the things that you should have is energy. You're supposed to be feeling energetic. You're supposed to be feeling good. Of course, uh, when you start up, just like any other thing, let's say you are over consuming your sugars, you are over consuming your processed and refined foods, maybe you are addicted to carbohydrate. Huh? If you start reducing the amount of sugars, the amount of processed and refined foods, you're going to have withdrawal syndromes, just like any other addiction. It is very possible and it is okay for the first one or two months eh? but this will not persist for long but again consistency is important to ensure that you adjust effectively so once you adjust you're supposed to feel energetic you're supposed to feel good about yourself you're supposed to be feeling like you own the world so if this is something that is not happening to you in your diet plan you need to go back to your dietitian have them replan that meal plan for you and your body is supposed to be functioning optimally even if you're managing a disease you're not supposed to be feeling sad another thing on healthy eating safety is a must hygiene is important the safety that you can actually control because there is this thing about the laws especially in our country whereby corruption is the order of the day and very little is being done to ensure that the foods that we have for our consumers or for our clients or for us as Kenyans on our tables is safe and not being done effectively. With overconsumption of their unsafe foods, like maybe overloaded pesticides, toxins on our vegetables, on our fruits, on our grains and such, this will definitely have a negative impact on the total population when it comes to health. Because you see things like uh, GMOs, they have all the benefits that people know, providing uh, foods that are drought resistant, press resistant, volumes and such, but again you see the toxicity levels need to be controlled effectively for it to 
be safe. Is that happening really? We pray to God that it will start happening. Eh? We don't have food labs in the country. We need to make sure that we push for that so that these foods are analyzed in terms of safety, in terms of nutrient composition, in terms of quality, to ensure that what is provided or what is available for the normal Kenyan is safe and healthy. Make sure that you clean your foods well. If you can access clean water, please do by all means. If you cannot, you can always boil. Boil the water that you have, clean your vegetables and clean your fruits very well to avoid intake of bacteria, germs and such that cause infections like diarrhea, vomiting and all these compromise our nutrition status. And make sure that you give this video a like and please don't forget to subscribe and watch this video next on gut healing foods that you need to take up on a day-to-day -day routine to help you heal and repair your gut and let's meet there.